Elmer Albert Hoffman mean anything to you? This middle-class Hungarian man was born in 1906, but he would not stay middle-class for long. His paintings would go on to sell for $50 million in today's economy. It's a lot of money, right? Yeah. The only issue is all of his paintings were fake. He would recreate Picasso and Matisse, who were still living while he was creating art at the time. He was very bold, audacious, if you will. His selling of scams made such an impact on the art community that he still lives in infamy today. Could you imagine paying millions of dollars for something only to realize that it was a fraud? Buying totally into something that ultimately turns out to be fake. Sadly, this happens more often than you'd think, time to time in the world of art, but daily in the worlds of our hearts. We invest in the fraudulent, in the fake, and in the phony. Let's pray together. God, we just love you. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to adjust our attitudes, our actions, our feelings, our perceptions, our theology right now. You have complete and total permission to do whatever you wanna do in our hearts and our minds. We love you, Lord, and we know that you have the real thing for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. I wanna welcome all of our campuses. Who's excited to be at church this weekend? Break the rain. Oh my gosh, we are so excited. My name is Zach, and this is my wife, Rachel. We are so excited. If you're live at a campus, if you're live at your home, if you're live online, watching later, God Behind Bars, we are so excited about what God is doing. <clears throat> now, last weekend, Pastor kicked off a series we're called Fooling Around, and Rachel and I were traveling for her birthday, so we're watching it on my phone, the 845 service, we're watching, and Dad starts pressing in about the reason that we're not seeing revival today is because we're getting to set our own rules, right? That there's no fear of the Lord. And I'm telling you, we were, so we were losing our minds in the hotel. We're just so excited about what God's going to do in this series. And we believe this weekend is going to push even further into all of our business, okay? Which is where God belongs. It's right in the middle of your business. And so, hey, during this message, you might need to, literally during the message, you may need to make an altar at your seat. You may need to grab your spouse's hand and whisper, I'm sorry. Today, there's going to be so much deliverance available if you will walk in it. Last weekend, we opened up God's word to examine his original inspiration for relationships. In Genesis 2, we see how intentionally God's design for relationships were, especially between man and woman. Now, you may know this in Genesis 2, that God molded men from dirt, right? And he formed woman from bone. And actually, that word formed is best translated as built or fashioned. That's why Rachel has to pick out my clothes every I weekend, do. right? Because she was, I was molded from dirt, okay, while she was fashioned by God. You're welcome. That seems a little unfair, okay? But uh, if you see me or Pastor get up here and looking, looking out of control, looking out of pocket, our wives can pick out our clothes, but that's besides the point. Uh, after God formed Eve, whenever Adam saw her, this is what Adam said. Now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. We shall, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Now get this. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife. They become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked. Woo -woo, and they felt no shame. This is the original design. The original design for relationships. The model for sexuality the first edition family, the real thing. And it matters because when you know about relationships, the truth about relationships, you will not be easily fooled by knockoffs. But can I ask, in your life, what defines a knockoff? In your life, what, well, actually, if you think about the physical with a purse or shoes or with a watch, what defines a knockoff or a fake is anyone besides the original designer making it or creating it? But I want to ask you, I want to ask you to ask yourself, when it comes to your relationships, your feelings, even your urges, who in your life gets to design what is fake 
and what is right. At Faith Promise Church, in our personal family, we believe that any feeling, urge, relationship, or intimacy outside of God's design and outside of God's timing is a fake. Now the question is, do you believe that? And not just with your voice, but with your heart, with your actions when nobody is watching. Do you let God decide what and when, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to intimacy? We really just want to equip you during this series of fooling around to search every facet of your relationships for marks of freedom and devotion, mm -hmm. protection, and intimacy that lasts. Yeah. Let me urge you, the enemy is after your family. That's right. He's after your future family and students. I promise you, he's after your identity That's right. and your purity. That's right. And one of the ways that he's doing this mm. is by flooding the relational market with fakes. And one of those fakes, and it's flying off the shelves, is that you can have sexual satisfaction without strings. Mm. There's no consequences. But honestly, if we look at what happens when we buy into those fakes, it's just not true. 57% of men in their 30s to 40s have viewed pornography in the last month. 50% of all men have looked at porn in the last month. Now, this isn't new. Paul writes to a church just like ours, pushing against people and culture who are letting the world define what the fakes were. Yeah. We as people have always wanted to do what we want to do. But Paul pushes on that position. And he says this in 1 Corinthians, I have the right to do anything, but everything isn't beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. Paul was committed to not be mastered by anything. Mm -hmm. No sin, no cultural pressure, no relationship was going to master him. He was going to be a slave to Christ. Are we committed to not being mastered? Are we falling for something besides God's masterpiece? You know, fakes only feel like freedom when in reality... They only make you a slave. And you might say, well, Rach, I don't feel like I'm a slave. I don't feel ashamed. Well, let's just look at what's happening statistically when we continue to engage in the fraudulent. 60% yeah. of men who viewed pornography feel lonely or isolated. 74% of men who viewed pornography feel insecure. And 74% of men who viewed pornography are less satisfied in their sex lives. And this isn't just an issue for men. Women are buying this phony as well. That's right. But hey, let's press in even a little more to that. That study around pornography shows that it is a significant indicator for loneliness, insecurity, self-image issues, and sexual satisfaction. And whether <coughs> pornography is something that is a challenge for you every once in a while or consistency, these are going to be challenges that you face. And I'm praying in this moment, the Holy Spirit ties those issues to that sin. It's not because you're insecure. It's not because God made you that way. It's because we have some things in our life that are operating outside of his design. Listen, let's push even further. It, it, whenever it comes to pornography, it even impacts a person's outlook on age, race, ethnicity, gender, and more. You know, what's funny is we put all the division, hatred, and racism on political parties when it should be put a lot of it on pornography. You know, what's funny is you look at Fox News, CNN, whichever one, and you're like, oh my gosh, I hate those people. But when it comes to marriage counseling now, pornography is a okay way to spur intimacy along. The enemy is trying to sneak these things in, but men and women of God, we, we can't fall for it. Yeah. Porn is a foundational fake that the world is buying, but the question is, are we buying it too? And you may say, well, Zach, Pastor Zach, a fake is all I can afford right now. That's a lie from the devil, I'm telling you. Yeah. You deserve the real thing. Yeah. You were made for more. Do you deserve the real thing because you're a perfect person? No, because God designed you for more. Yes. God designed you for the real thing. Amen. You give God some praise. <coughs> you do not have to settle for less. On our, our latest podcast, Rachel and I do a podcast every week. Uh, to It's a purpose podcast to push you in your purpose of winning your world. And 
I told my story of buying fakes and settling for less. And as I went through how that happened to me, and you guys know me, I get emotional talking about the Lord and my passion for you, but I'm telling you, whenever I walk through how it happened and the lies that the enemy told me, I just, I, I totally broke down on there. And I just encourage you to watch it, not, not just so it can impact you, but so prayerfully it'll go on so that you can impact others. We believe it's going to impact you in an incredible way. Paul continues to talk to the Corinthians, but listen, it's for us too. He says this, that food is for the stomach and stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. Those things won't matter in eternity. He says, the body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Listen, your body, your life is for the Lord. No matter what has been done to you and no matter what you have done, he wants you, he wants your body, and he wants you to live in your purpose. But reflect for a moment, how are you living today? What is your body for? What is your life for? Because, hey, we're all living like it's for something. Are we living like it's for pleasure, for comfort, for business to make money? Are we living to please people? There is so much more for you. When it comes to sexuality, the, the world's really bought this sentiment that sex is just another natural bodily function. What's the big deal? Why does it matter? Why are these boundaries on it? Well, the big deal is the world is using sex in a way not designed by God, nor designed for your good. And using something outside of its intended purpose is a plan for brokenness of the tool and for the person. There's so much that impacts us when we engage in these frauds. One of the studies that we really looked at said that women may be capitulating to men's preferences for encounters because if they don't, someone else will. What that means is that we as women engage in sexual acts. We stop resisting them, not because we want to do it, but simply because we believe this lie that if we don't, then someone else is going to. Does that sound like freedom to you at all? Of course not. That is a fake. And those same studies say that consistently, women following hookups are more likely than men to experience regret, low self-esteem, and mental distress. Does that frame look a little crooked to you? That is a fake. God's called us for more. Yeah, if, I, if I could jump in for a second before Rachel keeps on talking about that. I have two boys. I have a five-year-old River and a two-year-old Valor. And when they, this is not the season, right, where they're going to struggle with sexual immorality. But whenever they hit their sister or somebody, I grab a hold of them and I squeeze them tight enough where they can know I'm for real. Not so tight that they pop, but somewhere in the middle. And I grab them and I say, boy, you're a protector. And you may think, oh, this is toxic masculinity. A little bit, but not all the way. I grab them. I say, boy, you're a protector. Well, why do I do that? Is it because I want them to be manly men or a certain way? No, it's because the Bible says that they are protectors. And when I see men in the Bible, the men who honor God, they are protectors. The world would have my boys think that they're perverts, but God's word, their epi kisslers, their epi sulies, and their church says that they are protectors. That's who they are. So, and hey, that's what God says about a man of God. Can I beg you? For my daughter, can I beg you? Do not let your, your desires, your persuasions, your temptations set up a culture for your sons where they're perverts and not protectors. That's not what God says about you. So I beg you. I'm not trying to tickle your ears. I've got no desire to do that. It's my desire for you to live in who? God's called you to be sorry. You got excited? You did get excited. I get excited. That's nice. Okay. You know, the stats that we've looked at, they don't look anything like the fashioned and framed romantic and sexual naked and unashamed. And hear me, unashamed. That's what God designed for us in Genesis is that we could live freely. So why is it if 
It's so fake, it's so awful. If it's literally killing us from the inside out, engaging in sex outside of marriage, do only 39% of Americans say it's important to abstain from having sex until one is married? Because we bought a fake, and we don't even realize that we have been deceived. Did you know that married Americans report having more satisfying sex than single Americans? Yeah, they do. It's good when you're married. I'm just saying, no shame, Mm. all the naked. Most of the time. Okay, get back on track. Anyway, 36% of married people versus 16% of single people. Why do many people, even even us in this room, the people of God, we believe that we can fool around with fakes and we're going to get the same value and freedom as a masterpiece designed by our master? Because we've been fooled by fakes again and again, walking in deception. You know, the devil's been attacking relationships with immorality for a long, long time. That letter that we read earlier to the church in Corinth is in a city known for sexual promiscuity. At the temple of Aphrodite, there were prostitutes available. And at the inns and taverns, there were enslaved girls and boys, many of whom had been abandoned at birth. And using these people, these prostitutes and these children... That was considered an acceptable deterrent to adultery. Church, depravity in the world is nothing new. And we cannot be complicit Mm. in abuse. People cannot Mm. be used by us. And if we choose to do nothing, we stand just as accountable as those enacting abuse. That's right. That's right. And hey, maybe you've been abused. Maybe you need support. Maybe you need help. And can I just tell you, we're here for you. You can fill out a prayer card. You can do that with your name, and we'll reach out to you. You can do that anonymously, and we'll pray for you. But we have counselors on staff, and maybe you need to let us know that you need that. But can I just tell you this? As we've been praying and walking through this message, I feel like you have walked in some dangerous places. Some of you guys have been dragged against your will in some dangerous places. Can I tell you? We want to be there with you. It's a lie from the devil that your church doesn't want to go to those dark places. Wherever you've walked, we want to walk with you. We actually see a heartbreaking story of abuse in the Bible, one that should impact how we live our lives today. In the Old Testament, there's a book called 2 Samuel, and in chapter 13 of that book, we see a relational fake bought hook, line, and sinker. Amnon, who is King David's son, King David is the same king that killed Goliath, right? This hero in the faith, Yet we see his son go to a crazy place. Can I just tell you that maybe you're in a normal family or you're in a normal relationship, but you can very well still fall prey to a fake. Amnon fell in love with a young lady named Tamar. And it says this in 2 Samuel 13, right? It says, uh, because uh, Amnon became so obsessed with his sister that he made himself ill. She was a virgin. It seemed impossible for him to do anything to her. Catch this. This is huge, and this is so countercultural to what a lot of us have grown up in. But when it comes to making decisions, our feelings, our appetites, our hopes, and our urges do not get to decide what is right. We do not fool around where God has set Boundaries, because God has set those boundaries for us and the people that we'll be in relationship with. Amen? Amnon couldn't be with Tamar because she was his sister. But instead of turning to our designer, he lets his desire paint the picture of what was fake and what was freedom. We see Amnon turn to an Egyptian friend, Jonadab, for advice. And guess what Jonadab told him? What Amnon wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. He gave Amnon a way to get what he wanted, even though he knew it was wrong. He tells him, if you want it, you should have it. Your body, your choice, you desire satisfaction, you deserve satisfaction. And when you get told that enough, it starts to sound right. What places in your relationships and intimacy are you taking? Or are you doing things because you want to, even though it's a fake? Amnon actually tricked Tamar into being alone with him by acting like he was sick. And catch this. Listen to this. Don't just read this cold. This is a real thing that happened, and it's happening to people today. 
It goes on in 2 Samuel 13, and it said, he grabbed her and said, come to bed with me, my sister. She says, no, my brother. She said, don't force me. Such a thing should not happen in Israel. Hey, students, I hope whenever you go to school and you see a young woman or a young man or somebody of a different color or somebody who speaks different, get treated differently than a man or a woman of God should get treated. Something in your heart says, "Uh uh-uh. That's not how this should be, right? Whenever you see people, it's not about a political persuasion, but when you see people not being loved and cared for and led to the gospel, something should rise up in us and say, no, not in my house, not in my community, not in my city, not in my state, not in my country. Why? Because you want to be right? No, because the kingdom matters most. She goes on and says, don't do such a thing. She says, what about me? Where can I get rid of my disgrace? And she says, what about you? Think for a second, Amnon. You would be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Please speak to the king, and he will not keep me from being married to you. Tamar calls on Amnon to respect her dignity. He, she asks him to consider their relationship. And finally, she begs him, promising anything she could. But Amnon was not in love with Tamar, contrary to what he said in verse four and what his desires had told him, because we see as it continues in the story that he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he raped her. And then Amnon hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he had left her. And Amnon said to her, get up and get out. From in love, to loathing. That's what it feels like when we engage in these fakes and these frauds. And the enemy is selling us cheap substitutes. And a lot of us, our feelings and our desires are the marketing team for his campaign that's breeding death and destruction, not just out in the world, but in the people of God. Amnon fooled around and he found out that his desires, they were deceiving. What about us? Are we fooling around with things that we know we shouldn't? Are you realizing, is God's word, is the Holy Spirit highlighting in you that you've been tricked, taken in, hoodwinked, that you've fallen for a fake? Back in that letter to the Corinthians, Paul warns them and us about fakes. Listen about fooling around with fakes. Listen to how he views, how God views sexual immorality. He says, flee, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside of the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. The enemy is diminishing it because God elevates it. It's a big deal. And listen, Paul asked him a question I'd like to ask you. Do you know, do you know, man of God, woman of God, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Your body matters so much more than the Faith Promise campus you're at or the house you're at. That'll all be gone. It'll all be burnt up. But you, man of God, you, woman of God, you are the temple for the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. From this passage, we wanna give you a couple action steps, equipping applications for you to walk free, but also for you to help other people live free, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what's been done to you or no matter what you have done. This is not our opinion. This is not us having too much grace. This is what God's word says about you. So we're going to spell out the acronym FREE, and that should help us remember some of the things we can do to step into freedom from sexual immorality. And the first thing, we just read it in 1 Corinthians, it says flee from sexual immorality. So you're going to help me because we forgot our tape. We forget our tape. Oops. Okay, so Zach is the line of sin, Mm -hmm. okay? So he's sin right now. I'm sin. We want to get so close to sin. You know what I'm saying? Rachel. Sorry. Keep it together. I really like you. I like you too. We want to get as close as we can to sin. But God's word encourages, hey, let's move our line back. Mm -hmm. This is where the line needs to be. Not over there, right here. The second thing we've got to do is realize that sexual sin impacts us differently. 
yeah. and eternally. The devil wants to minimize temptation and desire and consequences, but he maximizes condemnation. The devil is after your identity and your eternal impact from the inside out. Yeah. Hey, and this one's huge. Can you, do you have a wide shot for me that can get both lines? This is the line of sin. And we know we shouldn't go past this. But the question that we ask, we asked when we were students, right? How far is too far? We asked that, right? Can I kiss? Like, what can I touch? It's not a sin. You asked it. Don't lie to me. But we asked, how close can we get? Is that what we should ask? How many times have you fallen in and wondered, gosh, I'm just a bad person. I'm just impure. There's no way. Get your butt off this line. I don't run my social media. At the gym, I never work out by myself. You best believe I'm doing farmer carries. There's leggings on this side that are too tight. There's tiny sports bras on this side. And I'm the goober walking with my armor bear going, holy, I want to be holy. I want to be holy. I want to be holy. Because my line's over here. But can I tell you, Rachel and I were watching a show called Jack Reacher. And I pushed my line over here. I pushed my line over here. I don't look at social media. Rachel runs that for me so that I don't see it. And guess what? We're watching the show. It's violence. Awesome. And then bam. There's a pair on the screen. A pair. Tatas, you know. You, they know what I mean. I said pair. They know. <laughs> and then, woo, I was right back over here. Falling off. Now, I didn't know they were coming. They surprised me with them. But either way, <laughs> I'm over here. My spirit said, turn it off. We belong over there. My flesh said, it probably won't happen again. Come on, so good. I watched the rest of that show. That was a mistake. The last thing we need to do, we're gonna give you the last E on social media this week, so be watching for that. But the last E we wanna talk about right now is engage and exchange your rights for God's right. Exchange your fakes for God's freedom. And you may say, well, well, well Zach, well, let me ask you this. I, who's Lord of your life? And I'm not talking to people who don't know Jesus. I'm talking to you who've given your life to Christ. You are saved. Who is the Lord of your life? Who is making your decisions? If he is Lord of your life, you have given up your rights and your preferences for his right and his lordship. What's making your decisions? Your desires or your designer? Again, we'll give you that last E on social media because we want to equip you to win your world Monday through Friday. But hey, God made the real thing for his glory and your good. God made you, you, for his glory and for your good. Do not settle for knockoffs. Will you stand with us as we pray? There's going to be a prayer team all over the room. You know what it's time to do now? It's time to repent. That's not a dirty word. That's not shame. That's not guilt. It's time to repent. And hey, can I encourage you? Come to somebody and tell them. Walking through those men and women around the room. We go to God. James 5 says we go to God for forgiveness and we go to each other for healing. Maybe you're not ready to come to a prayer team member. There's lit up crosses at every campus and there's sticky notes beside it. You may need to write on there pornography, adultery, shame, whatever. And you stick it to that cross and you trade that fake for the realest thing that's ever hit our planet, which is the grace of that cross. Amen. Let's pray. God, we come before you right now and we're just desperate for a purity. God, I pray for our middle schoolers and our high schoolers who are in the room. And there's some parents who are, they're concerned that their kids heard these words, but God, they're hearing them at school. They're hearing them on social media. God, set them free, make them pure. God, please send them out. God, moms and dads, the devil is after their intimacy and after their marriages. Young adults, the enemy wants to rob you of your power and your equipping to win your world. It's a lie. God, help us to repent today. Devil, you have no power here. This is not a time for shame or condemnation. This is a time to go to that cross and walk away empowered and full of the Holy Spirit. Lighting a candle signifying that we are the light of the world. Taking the Lord's Supper knowing that we have been bought with a price. 
I pray that this room is covered in spiritual chains and your sons and daughters will walk out in purity and in freedom. In your precious name we pray. Amen.